Hello, you're watching another episode of In Person with me, Lakshmi Baker. And today we have the honor of talking to a forest botanist. Now, without people like this, it's probably quite impossible for us to be breathing fresh air and to appreciate nature in itself. So I have the honor of speaking to Dr. Sopatmo this week. And he, because of his contributions in the area of tropical forestry, led him to uh, get the... Modeka Awards in 2012 for his contribution in the area of tropical forestry and in turn contributed to the people of Malaysia in this category. Dr. Sopatmo, thank you so much for the opportunity. Where it's been lovely meeting you. Such a small, tiny man with such big brains and so much in there. I'm here today to get all that out of you and to find out, you know, how can such a small body person, you know, produce such amazing results in the course of your career, which has been spanning mm -hmm. how many years? Mm -hmm. 48 years. 40? Eight years. 48 years. And you're 75 years old. 76. Yeah. Most people your age are probably retired at home, mm. you know, playing with the grandkids. Mm. And from the little that I've read about you, mm. you're just, you're going strong. You're going from strength to strength. You're not showing any signs of retirement. <laughs> I, I'd like to know, how did your fascination with the tropical forestry begin? How did all this begin? Well, this, uh, I was born and brought up in a village or kampung environment mm -hmm. and in 1937. So in that time, uh, there's no pollution, mm -hmm. air pollution or water pollution like we are having now. Mm -hmm. no? So after we play, we just come to the river, have a bath. It's a blessing, yeah, yeah, environment like that, yeah. So, um, Ying uh, brought up in a kampung environment. Of course, you are, your house is always surrounded by trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you were born in Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, in central Java. In central Java. Yeah, right. So there's no choice in the sand that you have to be friendly, to be familiar, or to know what you're surrounding. With the nature and the nature, the plants. Yeah. yeah. How plants grow, when the fruit exactly. coming, and things like that. Okay. When I reached my age to join the primary school, yeah. that was towards the end of Second World War. Okay. And Indonesia, particularly Java, was occupied by the Japanese troop. Okay. Right. So my primary school schooling is disrupted from then mm. until I finish uh, my primary school education okay there's no regular classes and so on because everything is guilty. disrupted yeah, yeah. Okay. and then I managed to get a place to a secondary school education mm -hmm. through the help of my because ex. you wanted to yeah. ensure that you completed your education yes and yeah. and uh, I'd, I'd guess that someone did instill in you that education was important. Yes, Maybe yes. other kids thought it was an excuse to not go to school. But you, why did you want to pursue it? And I, I read that you got help from uh, volunteer services to help you complete your education or something along those lines, was it? Yeah, but this is this because uh, uh, in that period, there's no time or no, no thing like regular tuition classes yeah. uh, uh, organized. Uh, it's by goodwill of People. my parent, friend, uh, mm -hmm. working mate, and so on. They somehow to make sure that we get the, some sort of education mm -hmm. because the school system at that time was not working. Okay, mm -hmm. so anyway, uh, by the time I finished my primary school and then I managed to get a place mm -hmm. in a secondary school in the in Solo, which is the capital of the area where, where I was right. born, okay? Okay. So, of course, by that time, uh, schooling system more or less back to normal, mm -hmm. uh, proper classroom and so on, okay? So, uh, even by that time, I don't have n no idea what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. based on my own tiny brain at that time, observation mm -hmm. and so on, how people in the kampung are suffering yeah. when come to health treatment. Mm -hmm. I always feel some sort of ambition. Yeah. When I grew up... So it came from you. Yeah. You wanted this. Yes. 
I want to become a medical doctor simply because I want to help people. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yep. Poor people in the, live in the kampung. Right. Because I know, you know... Uh, education is the way to get that. The, yeah, the education is the, good, is the way to, good, to get that, okay? Mm-hmm. So, uh, <coughs> my secondary high school education basically just share how it work. Mm-hmm. The competition there. Because to get a good education, to get in a place in university, mm-hmm. you have to score a good mark. Yeah. Huh? So, uh, and that's where this help from ex-teacher or so on uh, give me a, a chance line in the sense that I, apart from what I received in the classroom, mm-hmm. I got... You got uh, good enough results that showed right. you a place in university. Okay. And thereafter, mm. uh, you ended up in Cambridge. How did a little boy from a kampong in uh, Solo uh, end up in Cambridge, Doctor? Yes. Okay. So, by the time I finished my high school education, I knew that to pursue my uh, medicine uh, study mm. is impossible because my father, my dear father, mm-hmm. passed away when I was in second school, second year of my high school education. I okay, see. So, see. being the oldest uh, children, mm-hmm. I got two other smaller brothers. Mm-hmm. I have to help my mother to earn a living mm-hmm. to bring up my two younger brothers. Okay? Right. So that is one reason. And secondly, we don't have enough money to pay the fees to go to medical faculty. Yeah. Okay. So, but luckily for me, when I got my high school certificate, mm-hmm. this advertisement by the government of Indonesia, mm-hmm. they wanted to start a new uh, a batch of uh, scientists, mm-hmm. botanical scientists, mm-hmm. to replace the expert we used to, who used to work in the famous Bogor Botanical Garden mm-hmm. in Bogor, in West Java. Okay? Okay. And so I, and everything paid. Full, full, full board lodging. Okay. And guaranteed job after that. Right, guaranteed a job yes, after completion. Yes, because after you finish education, there will be a place for you to... Now that's an, a very attractive package yes. for a boy coming from the circumstances yeah, such okay. as yourself. So I just jumped to the opportunity. Of course, yeah. Okay. Luckily, I had a good enough grade from my high school, mm-hmm. and I was selected one among the thirty, one among the thirty candidates from right? the whole of Indonesia. Yeah, from the whole of Indonesia. Okay. okay. Now we're going to go to a sh- short uh, commercial break, and right after the break, okay. we're going to find out about your journey. Ah. Uh, from Indonesia to Cambridge, now okay. that's not something uh, many people can even do here in Malaysia, even from okay. affluent families. And uh, how did that lead to you coming to Malaysia and not back to Indonesia? Okay. More after this break. Okay. Gala TV dibawakan kepada anda secara langsung tiga kali sehari. Gala TV bersama host anda memaparkan buletin hiburan tempatan dan antarabangsa. Perkembangan muzik, filem, teater, fashion, temu bual eksklusif. Secara langsung, Gala TV setiap hari tiga kali sehari di Astro Awani. Berita segenap dimensi. So, Doctor, you said that you ended up in Cambridge, mm. a huge privilege, and you came to Malaysia after that instead of going back to Indonesia. Mm. How come? Uh, well, a long story in the sense that uh, it's a matter of uh, choice for me to, mm. to know whether 
Malaysia or Indonesia, which one is more conducive to, to the mind carrier. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, so um, when I finished my education in Cambridge, I went to Holland. Okay. The Leiden University because I got a research fellowship grant for University. two years. For okay. Two years. Right. So while I was uh, in, in Leiden, mm-hmm. with my second year over there, I heard the University of Malaya was looking for looking for botanists to be appointed. Right. Okay. Okay. So I just tried my luck. And at that time, botanists in Malaysia, I believe there were like close to none at that time. Well, most of them are foreign, you know, Foreigners. American, British. None Mal- no Malaysians at that time. Malaysia. And matching with my personal interest of putting my career, yeah. I decided that Malaysia is better in that time, mm-hmm. in that time mm-hmm. than Indonesia. And that led to all of this. Yeah. You're now we're now surrounded by vaults yeah. full of specimens. Yes. Up to three hundred and thousand specimens I believe are locked up in these vaults. Yes. Um, let's open one of them and see what sure, it looks sure, like sure. inside. Yeah. How did, how do you manage to store up to, and I believe some of the specimens date back to 1872. Yeah. Get your hand at it. Oh, yeah. this one. Yeah. That way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I see lots of cases in there. Yeah. How do you keep them for yeah. over okay. a century? The total we have mm-hmm. over about 300,000 specimens mm-hmm. is not collected by me. Right. Collected by uh, various botanists over the time. Various botanists. Right. Uh, 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 seen in that time. Right. So one of the oldest specimens we have mm-hmm. is collected by that botanist, not by me. Right, okay. okay. It dates back 1872. Yes. You have contributed a few specimens here, and your contributions are about how many? Uh, the, the most I personally collected mm-hmm. is uh, uh, around 5,000, the most. That's amazing. That's and, amazing. and the rest are by other, other, other people. Staff, other and I believe some of the specimens have been named after you. Yes, yes. Give me, give me some examples of them. Uh, in what fact, are they? when I have over there, uh-huh. uh, the, the specimen which is named after me, okay. and the specimens which I, I discovered. Okay. See, this is the kind of specimen mm-hmm. which uh, I name it okay. to honor one of my supervisors. Costa. Okay, Costa Mans. It's a Dutchman. Yeah. yeah. This is a member of the Durian family. That is so cool, naming a plant after uh, your, your, a person that you actually uh, want to remember. Mm. You get to put your name in there. I mean, I don't think I'm ever going to get my name on a plant. To this no, you never know. Uh, you, 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 you help me and then I may oh, okay. name some plant for you. <laughs> Maybe I'll apply to the <laughs> Anyway, this is an example. Huh? Okay. This is the spe- species of trees which I discovered. Oh, okay. Huh? Mm-hmm. So I discovered, I studied, mm. I looked at the detailed characteristics. Of course, no, you don't see the tree. This is just a sample of the, uh, of the leaf mm-hmm. and this is a sample of the fruit. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned just now, this is a member of the durian family. Is it edible? Uh, no, it back the, the hair there is very itchy. Oh, okay, I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you no. get all these plants outside? Uh, we have a few trees, okay. but uh, I don't think we have time to, to, re- to, to go there. To Maybe not today. Yeah. We'll come back another day. Yeah, okay. So this is an example of new species of trees which I've discovered while I'm, I'm here in Malaysia. Okay? That is so interesting. Yeah. Okay. Untuk kegunaan bapak jangan usik. You're adorable, <laughs> Dr. Sopatma. <laughs> they call you bapak around here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I, I want to create an environment. Of family, of home. Yeah, or? as conducive as possible. In this plant, mm-hmm. name after my name. Okay? Okay. Uh, by this person, okay. uh, Pino. Uh, Pino? Panel, panel. Panel. So a, part more, that's his name there again? Yeah, this is, this is the plant name, okay? Aglaya. As a member of the Langs, Langsat family. Okay. Okay, so name uh, after my name, okay. find this person, okay? okay. 
This person because uh, is uh, from Oxford University. Right. Okay. CM panel. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's so called Aglaya so part more panel. Yeah. There you go. So now, doctor, you've made me really, really curious. Yeah. I'm seeing all these uh, dried plants. Mm. Can you take me out to the forest? We are in Frim. We mm. are in FRIM. Mm. The forests are outside. Now we wouldn't do justice to this episode if we didn't take a walk in the park. Yep. In the forest, actually. Shall we go outside? Okay. Yeah. Let's go. This week on In Focus, we'll look at Brunei's creative industry between developing content and talent, as well as sustaining local values. Music at Brunei as a hobby. So, belum ada satu music industry in Brunei. Di Brunei, kru juga jadi pelakon, soundman jadi pelakon untuk memenuhi sejarah ruang yang ada. A lot of people that kind of skeptical. Skeptical. Like, is it is it true? Is it real? Is it real? Is it drama, TV? With me, Chef Zanjari, only on Astro One. You're still with me, Lakshmi Bacon, in person, and we're in the middle of a forest because I'm talking to a forest botanist, the great Dr. Sopatmo, who won the Merdeka Awards 2012. As promised, he's brought us to the forest. The smell that I get in this place is just precious, right? It just makes you want to leave the city and come and probably stay here for a couple of days before you decide to go back to the hustle and bustle of all that haze and whatnot. Yeah. Now, now, Doctor, all these specimens you've created, you've documented into mm. volumes of books. Mm. Who are the people who are going to benefit most from this kind of work? Uh, we're trying to publish something. Mm -hmm. It's not strictly technical is one thing, mm -hmm. and not too popular is one thing. Okay. But as a reference book, meaning that uh, even the ordinary forest rangers and so on, right. hopefully can read and mm -hmm. use. What about people who like... Uh, like Ayurvedic doctors or researchers and oh, yes. herbalists and all that. Yes. Where does it begin? Uh, do do people like you, forest botanists, come up with uh, specimens and then you test it and then the treatments come out? Or does it start from the people who are the Ayurvedic practitioners or mm. the researchers <coughs> and then they give these specimens to you to find out what are the uh, in what are the, the nutrients or the, yes. in the the qualities in these? Uh, no, we we should be go plants. to see them. Mm -hmm. You go to see them, <coughs> ask them, mm. okay, what kind of plant you have been using it right. for what kind of diseases, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And we compile that list, mm -hmm. okay? This is part and parcel of the so-called ethnobotanical study. Right. Okay? So based on that mm. information, okay, if that say treatment for that particular disease, say mm -hmm. cancer, mm -hmm. they use this one, this one. Mm -hmm. And the modern medicine concept, mm -hmm. there must be some scientific, scientific backing and explanation. Bio, bio, biologically active compound, chemical yes. compound, with responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So this is our next step. So we bring, collect the specimen, mm -hmm. bring it to the lab, mm -hmm. analyze according to prescribed technique that we know, mm -hmm. trying to find out. What is these, what are the yeah, components what, the thing? in each and every yes. of these leaves? And yeah. Now, people like these Ayurvedic doctors, uh, the treatment of Ayurveda comes back from so many years so ago. Many, no, not years, uh, decades. Decades, hundreds maybe of centuries. Years. Yes, and, yes. and orang aslis, they the have same. treatments they pluck from yes. maybe one of these plants behind yes. me. How are these uh, um, treatments discovered? Uh, some can be poisonous, some are not. Yes. So, do people die sometimes yes, in doing yes. this? Yes, yes. For a lot orang asli over here, mm. at the beginning, they just tr try and error. Right. Huh? Okay. If I got stomach up, something upset, mm -hmm. okay, I try to take that one. Mm -hmm. Work or not. But what makes them choose a particular leaf or root though? Are Pacific you having, I'm having stomach discomfort. I mean, do you know the psychology behind what actually helps them pick a certain well, sometimes related to the culture. Mm. Huh? See, if you got, uh, uh, for stomach act, continuous matter, mm. okay. They're trying to figure out what can clean up your mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. And to begin with, uh, the thing must be at least 
slightly edible. Mm -hmm. so slightly edible is really judged by with the fleshiness, mm -hmm. color, and the bitterness, so on. Maybe bitterness yeah. and so on. Bitter, then maybe it's uh, poison. Bitter or acid or whatever it is. Right. And by trial and error, mm -hmm. eventually they okay, this I can take. Right. Huh? Talking about trial and error, yeah. during your research, these many years you've had to set up camp in the middle of a jungle like this. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest trials or trickiest periods in your experience of setting up camp? I believe you've even set up camp for about two months at one point. Yes. What is the trickiest thing about setting up camp in the middle of a jungle for research? You must know, mm -hmm. or rather you must avoid at any time, mm -hmm. that you're, you're not going to establish your camp mm -hmm. on a wild uh, uh, animal track. Tracks, right. Because it happened to us somewhere in Taman Negara mm -hmm. one time. Mm -hmm. We heard also noise, crack, 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 crack. Mm -hmm. So the orang asli, the first to notice ma. Uh -huh. So uh, and the immediate response, they take anything, making noise, can make noise from mm -hmm. the kitchen. Mm -hmm. huh? Mana mana barang yang boleh. To scare the yeah. whatever has yeah. come Just away. Just knock it, knock, 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 and then starting a little bit of fire. Yeah. So you you almost you almost almost being trained by elephants. Stampeded by yeah. elephants <laughs> and often, but nothing happened. Has there been anything funny or? Uncomfortable you had to eat during your time. Oh, season. yes. <laughs> what is the weirdest or the most, uh, you know, uh, there are two things. Two things thing. that I had to eat. Yeah, First of all, again, happened in, in around Taman Negara. Uh -huh. uh, usually, we came with the Orang Asli guide. And, uh, so, one day, the group of Orang Asli asked permission, they want to catch fish, uh -huh. munching, okay. in the river there. Mm -hmm. Okay, good idea. Mm -hmm. And they come back about 12 o'clock midnight. Mm -hmm. In the morning, kita makan lah nasi dengan ini nampak macam gulai yang sedap. Fish sambal or yeah, something. Yeah, fish sambal. Okay. So, we makan, makan, makan. Memang sedap. So, it was delicious. Oh, it is. Just like fish. <laughs> right. And then I noticed, cannot be fish. Mana badan bulat, the cut body is round. Oh Cannot be lah. Ini must be ikan panjang sekalian. Oh, nanti yang saya hehehe betul lah. So that's the first time I eat a snake. Snake. Yeah. You ate a snake. Would you eat it again? No. <laughs> if I know, I won't. Does that mean that a person like you, uh, you don't need to stay in luxurious hotels if you go overseas? You're you're, you're quite the backpacker at heart. You mm. can rough it out in a oh yeah anywhere in a camp anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So if you went travelling, you you don't you don't go for expensive hotels. No, why? No, in Malaysia, most of the time in the old days, I stay in a rest rest house, mm -hmm. government rest house. Right. Yeah. What is your most proud moment? in your entire career being a forest uh, botanist? You discover something new, mm -hmm. like the trees, mm -hmm. the new species, trees new to science, mm -hmm. as I show you in, in, in the in the herbarium just right now. You, you face to face with the actual plant, the real yeah. life plant in the jungle. Yeah. Huh? And then you start making a lot of notes, mm -hmm. checking all the characteristics of the particular plant, mm -hmm. measure the the girth or diameter, estimate the height, and right. so on. Okay, and you slash it, the bark a little bit with any sap or not. Yeah. All this big character we have to. But take. if you have to pick the moment, it's when you discovered that this is something that you've never ever mm. um, seen before. It is mm. an entirely new specimen. Mm. That's when you you yes. feel yes. the most elated. Yes, because you, you discover something new. Mm. Yeah. Nobody else has done it before. Mm -hmm and no, nowhere else can be, uh, can be found. Mm -hmm. So there's something new there. Mm -hmm. uh, so you go back to your lab or herbarium, mm -hmm. you go excited about it. Okay. And then, then you sit down and look, right. <laughs> examine on the microscope or whatnot. And it's true, you, say, you describe, you publish an international journal. Okay, if there's one thing you want to leave behind uh, before you retire, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be any time soon, what is it going to be? One thing you want to leave behind for the younger generation? I want to share with them whatever I learned in the last 48 years. Mm -hmm. huh? By talking to them, showing to them how to do it. Okay? Right. 
this is one thing. Mm -hmm. And I want to show them like the eight volume of book, just now I show it to you. Mm -hmm. the, this can be used for the next generation also. Uh, because uh, from our own experience, book like this, one is published, not going to be published for the next 50 or 100 years. Mm -hmm. It could take some time to do it. It takes a long time to take research. Time to do it. Okay. Okay. So it's become a reference book. So I wish when I, you know, have to pass on the baton. Yeah, pass yeah. the baton. They got two things. Yeah. There. When I live, I already tried my best to pass whatever I knew mm -hmm. huh, to them. Okay. To teach them. Huh? And I'm sure that that is not going to be a problem because you have documented such amazing volumes of books mm. and your research together with others have put together a treasure mm. of information on botany mm, mm, mm. uh, in uh, uh, surrounding the peninsula of Major Sabah and Sarawak. Mm. Dr. Sopatmo, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you for letting us into a forest research uh, Institute of Malaysia. And I really, really admire your strength and your grit at 75 years. I'm sure a lot of you can pick up so many uh, values mm. and uh, pointers on how to keep going strong and what you really believe in and love yeah. uh, right to the, to the end. And it's not even the end yet. So thank you very much. Okay. Stay tuned for another episode of In Person next week where we will be interviewing another stirring, stimulating, sensational personality. That's a uh, bye from me for now. Lakshmi Baker. Bye-bye. Okay.